Hello, boys and girls. Greg from the Scary Spirits Podcast here to make you another cocktail. This week, we will be making the Stinger cocktail, which is the featured cocktail in today's episode. I'm going to start with an old-fashioned glass with ice. To that, we're going to add brandy. I think it's our first brandy drink. One and three quarter ounces. Brandy. Next, white creme de menthe. Creme de menthe. Three quarter ounce. Three quarters of an ounce. Creme de menthe. Next, we stir well, it says. Finally, we serve and enjoy. All right, pretty boozy. The Stinger Cocktail. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the podcast. See ya. In this week's episode of the Scary Spirits Podcast, number 67, Wasp Woman, we experience the pressure society disproportionately places on females to retain or recapture their youth. But it begs the question to all of us, how far would you go to preserve your looks? And if you could, even with dire consequences, would you? After all, age has its benefits. Or maybe we should all buck the young forever trend and turn into old swamp witches as nature intended. Personally, if my choices are turning into a wasp, or living as a swamp witch, I'll meet you in the swamp. Cheers! Welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So, if you're ready, let's go. Hi, I'm Greg. Hi, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast, a podcast that combines the two very different but highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? I'm doing fabulous, Greg. How are you? I'm okay. We do not match. <laughs> no, we can't match every week. No, that would be creepy. <laughs> All right. Do we have anything to cover before we get started? Should we mention that we did have a winner on the Greg doesn't know what drink he's making contest? <laughs> <laughs> we finally have someone step up to the plate, go to the YouTube channel, and call Greg out, actually using the word dumbass. For you for calling the drink the wrong name, I'm digging it. So, Greg, tell us who called you a dumbass. Well, Karen, that would have been YouTube user 8984CMLAY. CMLAY, I think, because C, M, and L are capitalized. Awesome. 8984CMLAY. 
we will be in contact with you and send you some fabulous prizes chosen especially for you. Congratulations. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for calling me a dumbass. Someone had to. I mean, someone different. <laughs> <laughs> someone new. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we get started on the film, Karen? I don't think so. I think we're ready to go. Okay. I believe this week was your choice. Was it? Was it not? It was. And what film have you chosen for us this week, Karen? I have chosen the ever entertaining The Wasp Woman from 1959. 1959, you say, Karen? Yes. Do you remember 1959, Karen? <laughs> no, I do not. I don't either. Just thought I'd ask. Be weird if I did. Any reason you chose this film? Um, I was just searching around for, uh, I wanted to do a B-horror movie after last week's excellent movie. I thought we should plummet in quality and try something <laughs> more my speed. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting. Try to try to get that cocktail rating back up, Karen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I don't know. I was, I don't know if you know, I think I told you when, when I was young, I was stung by a bee. Well, multiple times, but one particular time, final time, I went into anaphylactic shock. And my mom had to give me mouth to mouth and call the ambulance. It was very exciting. The whole neighborhood was all a Twitter. But I made it. So I always kind of have a fascination with bee horror, meaning honeybee or stinging insect horror movies. Yeah, but this is a wasp, though. So. Yes. Kind of holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> yep, and it was directed by Roger Corman, Karen. True. Who directed the Bucket of Blood film we did. Does it seem like 17 weeks ago, Karen, we did that? 17 weeks. Wow. The Bucket of Blood. No, it does not. Time uh, flies with you, Greg. Well, you know, I do what I can, Karen. Do you have a cocktail, Karen? I do. What would that be, Karen? It's called. Please the, tell us, Karen. It's called the Stinger. I thought the that was stinger. clever. Yeah, it was. What? How do we make this cocktail? You're going to need one and three quarter ounces of brandy. Three quarter ounce of white creme de menthe liqueur. That's it. And You're going to gather the ingredients. <laughs> yes. Pour the ingredients into an old fashioned glass over crushed ice. I didn't have crushed ice, Karen. I'm sorry. You just smash it. You put it in a bag and go to town with a meat tenderizer. I don't have time for that. No, oh, I did. That's why I was late. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> Stir well. I did stir and, well. And enjoy. What if you don't have white creme de menthe, Karen? <laughs> then you're like me and you have to use green. <laughs> so but it's a low color. Greg said they're the same. You should taste the same. They're interchangeable except when color is important. So color's not important to you, Karen, then you do you. No, well, I did me. <laughs> you want to give the listener time to gather the ingredients and make their stinger. Yep. Hold on. And we're back. Before we go further, I'm going to give you the history of the cocktail, the stinger. Oh, okay. right off the bat, we're getting educational. All right, cool. So the stinger originated about 1890. It, it was immediately popular in New York City and quickly became known as a society drink. It's pretty simple to make. I'll Only for that. the upper classes. <laughs> so while we drink this, we need to be all classy and shit because this is an upper class <laughs> drink. Okay. Yeah, so I put my pinky out. So the stinger remained a critical component of the bartender's repertoire until Prohibition. And then it was actually popular during Prohibition because the cream de menthe could mask the taste of the inferior quality brandies then available. By the 1970s, 
most people weren't drinking it anymore and almost no one drinks it today. Not bad. Tastes like Once scope. again, it kind of gets better as it sits. Oh, know? tastes a little like mouthwash to me, but I do like the crushed ice. It gives it actually a nice texture. Might you have a brief synopsis? Unless you have other facts about the stinger you want to share, here. No, I just wanted you to know we were being classy today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you better point that out to me, Karen. Otherwise, I'll just... <laughs> I need to. I need to let you know. Today is the day. Class it up. <laughs> All right. Do you have a brief synopsis? I have a very brief synopsis, but I love it. The Wasp Woman from 1959. A cosmetics queen is transformed into a murderous monster after she uses an insect chemical to preserve her beauty. I have that one as well, Karen. Ooh, it's a I did, I did have another one, though. Just in case. I had a backup just in case you wanted to go a little longer. No, I like that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty good. Accurate for the most part. It's a good one set in summary. Are you ready to get into it? Yeah, let's get into this fine cinematic experience. Uh, The Wasp Woman from 1959. Also known, Karen, as the Bee Girl. An insect woman, in case you were wondering. Did you watch this on Amazon Prime, Karen? I did, and I watched the color-free version. The free colorized no, version. That's a better way to say it, not the <laughs> yes. color-free version, because that makes it sound like the black and white one. But right. So the first thing I saw, which is must be the first thing you saw, because I did the same, was rated 13 plus for smoking, Karen. And there was a lot of and smoking. There was a lot of smoking. Yeah, there was. Then we have credits. And at the end of the credits, right before it says produced and directed by Roger Corman, it says copyright MMXX, which kind of threw me off. Okay. Because that's 2020. Yes. <laughs> so this colorized version must be copyright 2020. Somebody copyrighted it. Is all I can think. Well, before yeah, we even I think get it to... did fall into the public domain. So maybe the copyrighted version, someone, yeah, maybe someone copyrighted the colorized version. But before we even start, the credits are over a sw- like a hive of honeybees, not wasps. Yeah, bees. 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 And the version we watched was the television version too which is longer than the cinematic version they put in extra stuff yep so there's a prologue so we see a beekeeper right karen and here's where i made a note this is color (laughs) it's originally in black and white and this beekeeper is looks like he's going for a hornet's nest he's going to well, it looked like he's hearing buzzing, so he's looking for a natural hive, I think. And there was one way up in a tree, I thought, but he didn't want to climb the tree and he saw a wasp nest and he took that one instead. But I think he was maybe looking for the wasp nest now that the story has unfolded. Yeah, it looked like a hornet's nest to me. I don't know. Well, we're supposed to believe it's a wasp nest. And he puts it into a crate. Well, wait, before we get there, he smokes it. Yeah. And he talks to them and tells do. them to relax, to sleep, sleep, sleep. So do you want to know what they use to smoke bees and why they do it? Yes, you do. Sure, Karen. Go on. <laughs> so beekeepers use smoke to keep bees calm during hive inspections, yeah. which everyone knows. But... This is what it actually does. So when bees sense danger, they release an alarm pheromone called isopental acetate from a gland near their stingers. This chemical wafts through the air and alerts the other bees to get ready to attack. Smoking a beehive masks this pheromone, allowing the beekeeper to safely perform his hive inspection. I thought that was kind of cool. And the smoke yeah. beekeepers use can come from a variety of fuels, Most of the time, it's pine needles, twigs, sometimes cardboard. So it says the role of smoke is to calm bees. Therefore, you should never use synthetic materials. 
because that can irritate them. And I'm going to give you a question now. Okay. If you had to guess, how many bees are usually in a honeybee hive? In a, in a hive? In a honeybee hive, which is what they showed at the beginning. And they do show multiple times before the movie really gets going. They're working with bees. I'm going to say 500,000, Karen. Ooh, that's a big hive. A honeybee hive usually has between 20,000 and 80,000 bees living together in a colony. Colony is made up of one queen bee and several hundred drones, which are males, with female worker bees making up the balance. Okay. The queen's only job is to lay eggs, and the drone's job is to mate with the queen. The worker bees are responsible for everything else, gathering nectar, guarding the hive and honey, caring for the queen and larva, keeping the hive clean, and producing the honey. Okay. But yes, he places the wasp nest in a lockbox, basically, and walks out. So next we see a car pull up, Karen. <laughs> Apparently it's a 1960, even though the film's 1959, since this is the prologue, which was done later. We have a 1960 vehicle, a 1960 Ford Falcon Ranchero. I thought it was a Ford Fairlane wagon at first. That's what I thought it said on the side, but. Yeah, but it's not. It's a Falcon, Ford Falcon Ranchero pickup truck. 1960, Karen. Any idea what that vehicle sold brand new for? <laughs> Way back in 1960. $1,800. <laughs> What'd you say? $1,800. I'm giving you that one. Really? Yeah, you're eighty two dollars off. Oh, well, that might be my best one yet. <laughs> Am I over or under? You're under. It was eighteen eighty two MSRP. Nice. I'm getting better at that game. What do you think one goes for today, Karen? We haven't done this in a while. Maybe that's why you're nailing this one. Let's say well, average, average retail today. Now, see, can't we stop now when I did well? Because <laughs> we know. My my credibility is about to plummet. Eighteen thousand. No, I'm sorry, Karen. That is incorrect. Average retail of a 1960 Ford Falcon Run Ranchero. I don't know why I can't say that. Nine thousand one hundred dollars today. It looked like a cool car. I thought maybe people would like it. Yeah, it is. It, they know? go for as much as 18000 That's what I just said. I am on the high end. You know, <laughs> I like the luxury cars. But you said 1800 No, I said 18000 Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're it's on the It's basically the same answer, but with a zero. <laughs> yeah, just add another zero. That's, that's not a bad plan, Karen, for future. <laughs> You've already cracked my code. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool car. I liked it. So in the beginning, when he's talking to a couple of the beekeepers before the, I was going to say Ford Fairlane, what is it? The Falcon. Before the Falcon Ford pulls Falcon up. Ford Falcon Ranchero. They call him Doc. They say, good morning, Doc. And they notice that he has wasps instead of bees. And yes, he is a doctor. But they stop calling him that halfway through the movie. They just call him Mr. Dr. Zinthrop. Yes. But he says he knows wasps and they know him and they know who their friends are, which is totally not true because wasps are mean. <laughs> well, maybe they just know I'm not their friend. But apparently he's working for some company called Holiday Honey because like the big boss like pulls up in that. Yeah, he's Mr. Barker from the front office. Yeah. And we learned that uh, Zenthrop's extracting royal jelly from queen wasps and he's trying to reverse the process of aging and he demonstrates to the big boss with two dobermans karen i know he has a, a lab in basically a shed two dobermans one looks like a puppy one looks like a full-grown doberman but he says they are the same age karen yep do you want to know what royal jelly is that's what they use to produce a queen, right? <laughs> Something it's like a, that. 
It's a honeybee secretion that is used in the nutrition of larvae and adult queens. It's secreted from the glands in the hypopharynx of nurse bees and fed to all larvae in the colony, regardless of sex or caste. The queen bees just get more of it. All right. They tried to use it as a cosmetic supplement, but everybody outlawed it and said it did nothing. So that's probably back when they were first looking into it. Or maybe it was after they outlawed it. I don't know. But then Zinthorpe is fired because apparently he's just not one of the team, Karen. He's just not a team player, apparently. No, and Barker from the front office, that's not what he's supposed to be working on. He's supposed to be working on royal jelly extraction, and he's spending a shit ton of money, and he's not doing what he's supposed to. Plus, Barker doesn't believe that those are dogs are the same age anyway. And that is the end of the prologue, Karen. Now the room movie begins. And we see shots of what looks to me to be New York City. That's that New it, York City. <laughs> it was a little bit Southern when you said it. Yes, <laughs> it does look like New York City. Okay. And we see a sign that says Janice Starlin Enterprises. And then we cut to a board meeting, apparently, and looking at a bar graph, Karen, and it don't look too good to me. She's got a chart. Sales have dropped 14 and a half percent, Karen. But not in their competitor's sales. No, no. And she keeps referring to her board members as gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Because they all are gentlemen. There's two females there. There's two females. Those are their secretaries. (sighs) The board members are actually male. All right. And one of them named Lane, Bill Lane. Well, she wants, she says she's sure they have an explanation for the decline. And Bill Lane says he does. And he stands up. As he's smoking a Marlboro. Yep. And he blames Janice. He does. Because they've stopped using her. She's no longer the face of the company, right? They don't use her face in the ads anymore. I think because she thinks she's like getting old. She's not young and beautiful anymore. She's 40. No, is she 40? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I added it up later. It turns out she's 40. So they stopped using her because she's not young or beautiful enough. Well, whose decision was that, though? They didn't really say. They didn't say. I think it was probably sound like it was hers. Because they're saying that. Yeah, because he said after 16 years, now there's all of a sudden new faces and and her Clients have lost trust, and he says she should still be the face. And she accepts the flattery, but basically says she's getting too old. Yeah. At 40. And we meet her secretary, Mary, Mary Dennison. You recognize Mary Dennison, Karen? She looked familiar. Who is she? She was in a bucket of blood. She was. Okay. Yes. She was the one who was nice. Yeah. Yeah. She was nice (laughs) to, uh, I want to say Bill, but it's Walter. Not. Walter. Walter Paisley. Yep. She, she paid was, for that. Yeah, she was the girl that Walter wanted to marry. Don't be nice. <laughs> so next, Janice meets with Arthur, who is a, another member of the board, apparently, Arthur Cooper. And he, after the meeting, she calls him into her office. Yeah, and he smokes a pipe, but he does light a Marlboro for Janice. Yeah, Janice is so worried about being young and beautiful. She want, The first thing she should do is stop smoking. Well, maybe. And then they talk about royal jelly. Yes, yeah, she asks his opinion of it. He says that no two people react the same to it. And she's talking about using um, from a queen wasp, right? Yes, and he says the queen wasp is on the level with the black widow. Black widow, yep. He describes what they do. They paralyze their victims, and then they take their time devouring them alive. They even kill their mates. It's a one-sided yep. romance. So his vote is against. Yeah, but she Boston. talks about you know enzyme extracts from royal jelly, and he pretty much tells her to forget it. Not worth it. Next, we see Janice meeting with Dr. Zinthrop. Yes, fired from the honey company he is now selling his wares to cosmetic people they go to their lab and which he says 
he can give her 10 to 15 years and yes. she wants tangible proof. So they go to the lab and he's see, carrying a box. Should say that. And there are two Guinea pigs. And they look bad. <laughs> They're looking a little rough. And he injects one of them with some sort of serum. I call it. Yeah. And this would totally freak me out <laughs> because what within happens a, within a few minutes it turns into a young rat Karen. Yes. <laughs> so it's completely changed species <laughs> which nobody says uh, anything about. i know that's why i wrote turns to a rat question mark <laughs> looked like a rat to me <laughs> it was i rewound it because i i'm like did i miss something was there a rat and a guinea pig in there or just two <laughs> guinea pigs so i watched it again i'm like nope that's a guinea pig and then kabam it's a young rat yep which guinea pigs you can't really make them look younger they look like that all yeah. the time so right. they're just smaller right yes so i don't i guess they couldn't find a baby guinea pig <laughs> i guess but you'd think they could do rats they could have found a a baby rat maybe yeah so, but you can see when he holds up the guinea pig, he pretends to inject it. You can totally see that he doesn't inject it. In fact, yeah, some of the pretty quick, but yeah, you can tell some of like the liquid squirts on the other oh, side. Does it? I, yeah. I kind of looked for it, but didn't see it. I'm like, why do they have to go to the it lab? Pretty for this? quick, but whatever. But he does the second one, but we don't see it. Zinthrop works out a deal with Janice, and she's smoking again. <laughs> Yeah, do you remember his terms? He wants first he wants, he wants his, his lab, lab and all expenses. Yeah. He wants a small percentage of the money they make and he wants full credit. Okay. For his discovery, which is reasonable. I don't think any of that's out of the ordinary. And Janus volunteers to be his guinea pig because he hasn't tested it on humans yet, but she says when he's ready. She's, She's his huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, she was going to draw up a contract, but he doesn't need no stinking contract. Her nope. word's good enough. Word's good enough for me. Yep. Next, we cut to the board, a board meeting, another board meeting. And Janice fills in the board that, you know, Zinthrop's working on secret shit and leave him alone. He answers to her. Only her. Yep. And she does expect sales to go up. And everyone's smoking Marlboros. Yep. <laughs> Next, we have a montage I wrote, Karen. Yeah, it was a weird montage. Zinthrop and the board. And bees. Oh, bees? There were bees in there, too. Okay, which and bees. I guess there's supposed to be. There was lab, bees, and then a person on the board. Then the lab, That's the bees, right. the person on the board. Yeah. So they sh everybody got a close-up. Next, we see Bill Lane and Mary. And apparently, they're a couple, Karen. Yes, they are. And they're not sure about this Zinthrop dude. And well, Bill isn't. But Mary's like, give him a chance. They think he's a confidence man, Karen. Yeah, they said that a lot. I don't know what that slang means. Scammer. Well, I assumed, but it's not something we say anymore. No, it's not. Although I might start calling you a confidence man. And I'll say, shh. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll say, no one knows what that means, Karen. <laughs> but they're going to dinner. And over dinner, oh, they th I think they meet Cooper, right? No, that's later. At dinner, uh, well, maybe they do on the way out. They want her to spy on Janice. Yeah. Listen in on calls. Because Arthur thinks that Zinthrop is a quack. Arthur which, Cooper. Yes, which he thinks is worse than a confidence man because a quack could actually hurt someone. That's right. That's Whereas a I confidence man just takes your money. All right, then we cut back to the office and we have the secretaries. The gossiping. two secretaries gossiping. The, I think they're there for comic relief, but I don't know. I don't know that they really moved the story, story forward. At no, all. they were talking <laughs> about their bad boyfriends. And one of them kind of goes in and out of a New York accent. <laughs> well, when she answers the phone, she acts all classy. But when she's talking in her normal voice, she 
And like she's the from the thick Bronx. New York, yeah, the thick New York accent. Reminds me of my mom when we we would be causing hell and she'd be screaming at us and the phone would ring and she'd be yelling, you guys stop it. And she'd go, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Like, not, like the chaos, the chaos was not in Can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> How may I direct your call? Zinthrop tells the secretary she wants to see, he wants to see Janice. Yep. When she has time and he oogles the blonde secretary, something fierce. He does. I don't know why i thought at that point he sh- he was going to use it on himself and come back and <laughs> wine and dine the secretary but he doesn't he never no, used he it on himself nope but janice does go to see him and apparently he had shown her a large cat and now it's a kitten we, we didn't see that but no we just see the barely kitten. it's a kitten <laughs> and so she's all in yep she's and ready he says that he's ready as well, and he gives Janice her first injection. Next, we have a scene where Dr. Zinthrop has spent $23,000. and Yeah, Janice gets a call from accounting. For enzyme extract or some shit. Janice says, yeah, pay it. Whatever he wants, pay it. Pay it. Don't worry about it. It's none of your concern. Just pay it. And this is the first time that Mary listens in and hears the call. Next, Janice and Dr. Zinthrop, three weeks in now. There's been a time lapse, Karen. Janice is wondering why it is taking so long. Well, they do agree she does look a little younger. Five years. That's... I think they say five years. Yeah. yeah. But she's very impatient. and He tells her she has to have patience. But she just says, increase the dose, man. Let's get this going. Let me be young again. He does talk about a more powerful enzyme or whatever that can be used maybe for lotions. Yes, he's working on that. He's working on that. And all these injections are very poorly done. I'm just saying. (laughs) They're not even close. But I I, I didn't notice, Dr. Karen. Basically, she wants more. (laughs) He's telling her, slow down, be patient. You'll get there. Next, Mary is snooping around the office and Janice's desk. Yep. And apparently she finds something like a letter. Yeah, Zintra wrote a letter to Janice. That's how he brought up his work to her. And she calls Bill Lane, of course, and they meet for lunch. And of course, Arthur is there as well. They always go out together. Conspirators. Yeah, Bill and Arthur are skeptical. Arthur is going to look into Zinthrop. He's going to try to look into his background. And they do say Janice is losing her youth and beauty, which is the basis of her company. Next, we see Janice working late, Karen, in the office by herself. Apparently, she sneaks down to the lab, pulls out some serum out of the 1959 fridge, and injects herself. With way more than the doctor does. It's a bigger, it's a bigger needle and a yeah. bigger. <laughs> I Yeah, it is a bigger. Receptacle. <laughs> right. And as she leaves, we see the cat in the cage. And it don't look so good, Karen. No, it looks bad. <laughs> Pretty quick shot, though. But we both saw it. Cat looks bad. Yep. They don't dwell on it, but it's it don't look so good. I think we cut to the next Morning now, and Janice enters the office, and secretary is shocked at how young she looks. She's looking lovely. Next, we cut to a board meeting, and all the old men are, like, on top of the table. They're, like, leaning into the table. like. (laughs) Well, she takes off her glasses, and everyone's stunned. She's so youthful and beautiful. If only she had her hair up in a bun and took a... I know, right? And she shook her head, shook her, and took her glasses in slow off. motion. <laughs> you know, but she didn't wasted have opportunity. Hair, but whatever. Yes, the old men are all struck about how young she looks. So she calls the meeting, adjourns the meeting, and well, they've got a new slogan. It's "Return to Youth." Return to Youth. And she talks about the regeneration program, and then she basks in the compliments. 
But then she wants to talk to Mary afterwards. Yep, ask Mary to stay behind. She's very excited. Mary, can you believe it? We're going to change the industry. <laughs> After she goes, how old do I look? How old do I look? And then Mary, Mary does kind of come clean there. She says that they were worried about her. and But shit seems to be working, right? Yeah, it's because Mary says she looks 22 or 23. And Janice says she's back. That's when she started the company. So she's back to when she started the company. Hello, boys and girls. Karen and I hope you are enjoying the podcast. You know what I think can make your listening experience even better? A delicious themed adult beverage. You can find all our drink recipes on our website, scaryspirits.com, in the recipe den. Tune in every Wednesday and join us for a drink. Now, back to the show. Next, we cut back to the lab. Zinthrump enters and he's looking at his animals in its cages, but the cat is missing, Karen. And the cat is pissed. And it attacks him. It does. Next thing I have is Arthur is still skeptical. Well, he breaks the cat's neck Hmm. and puts it in the incinerator. So the cat is no more. Gotcha. But yes, the three conspirators are at lunch again, and Arthur wants to get into the lab. And here's where I have Zimthrop puts the cat in a box, question mark. (laughs) I think he incinerated it. Yeah. And Arthur does enter the lab. So Zinthrop just walks out of the lab. In like a daze or something. I, it was weird and leaves the lab open conveniently. So Arthur doesn't have to break in. He just walks in. He Zinthrop is like dejected and leaves the lab. Arthur does pick the lock though on the desk, Karen. And he's smoking his pipe the whole time, which is a dead <laughs> giveaway that he was in there. There's a knock at the door. It's Janice. She, she needs her fix, I think, Karen. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> He finds a book in Zinthrop's desk. Yeah, like a diary or something. Yeah. The old find the diary trick, Karen. Yeah. He looks around the whole lab. He sees some lab notes and stuff, but he goes for the personal diary. So Janice enters. Arthur's hiding. And Janice seems to be troubled. Next, we see Zinthrop, and he's walking down the street. And he crosses the street, Karen, and... He is hit by a car. I thought he killed. <laughs> I said Zinthrop kills himself by walking into traffic, but I was wrong. He seemed like he was in a daze. I couldn't tell what was going on. Yeah, he was a day in a daze. But yes, he gets in a in an accident. He's yeah, run over. But then they realize he's missing, Karen. And Janice hires someone to find him. Like Time is vital. Private detective or some shit. But she knows nothing about him, not his address, nothing. But she goes, oh, wait, I have a letter from him. But she can't find it. Nope. Because Mary took it. (laughs) Yep. And Mary confesses to Janice that she did take the letter because they were concerned about her. And she says, oh, that's okay. I would have done the same thing for you. But she, Janice also (laughs) seems to have a headache at this point. Says, get Lane and Cooper. Next, we have a montage. Looking for Zinthrop, Karen. Yes, I don't know who it is, but they're getting out at different places, showing him a picture, and people are shaking their head no, yeah. like they haven't seen him. Yeah, apparently and, they're in some some kind of Buick, but I don't know what. But then they go where they should have started if they were a good detective agency. The hospital, Karen? Yes, the hospital. Check the hospitals! That's what you do first. <laughs> Cut to Janice's office, and there is a call, and they tell her that there is a John Doe matching Zinthrop's description at the hospital in a lab with a, coat. And <laughs> with a head injury and brain damage. And then we cut to the hospital, and the hospital doctor, Karen, is played by Roger Corman, the director oh, really? of the film. Yeah, Uncredited, but that's him, apparently. Is he like Hitchcock? Is he in all his films? I don't think so. Hmm. No. Just couldn't find someone and he filled in? I guess, yeah. I think Bucket of, Bucket of Blood came out this the same year as this. 
and um yeah he's before this but i don't think he's in it you know so, i don't remember no but too much burt convy no room for roger corman <laughs> but janice wants the best doctor and she's willing to pay to take care of dr zinthrop but he's in a coma and has got brain damage and I don't know. I have a note about 48 hours. What'd they say about 48 hours, Karen? So it's three days Crucial. later and Arthur and Janice are talking that Zinthrop is no better. So it's only been three days and Arthur is ready to write him off, but she wants to give him another 48 hours before Arthur gets the lab, which Arthur didn't seem like a, a scientist before this, but somehow he's going to take over. Next, we cut back to the lab, and Janice is shooting herself up again, Karen. I wrote, does she want to be 12? <laughs> like, wh why is she doing so? She looks fine. She's not even letting herself fade a little before she injects more. Maybe she is an addictive personality, Karen. She does smoke a lot. Arthur wants to run a qualitative analysis. Yes, he, qualitative he, analysis, I wrote, Karen. He Dr. breaks Karen. into the lab. He finds notes. And then Arthur is attacked by a wasp woman. Well, first you hear buzzing. Yeah, buzzing. And 53 then... minutes in, Karen. <laughs> we see a wasp woman. She attacks him. They struggle. And she basically bites him and eats him. I guess she's consuming him. Be a lot. He, he gone and we never see him again. Nope, he's gone. <laughs> And then there was a strange man outside who heard the buzzing, but he thought it was the night watchman. Yeah, but I didn't know who it was at the time. Mm -hmm. Thought it was his radio. Yeah, he thought it was the radio buzzing. And then Janice has con converted back to herself. Yep, but she's injecting herself again. And she's starting to get headaches. Yes. Next, we cut to a board meeting and Mary offers Janice some aspirin. I have some aspirin in my purse. Janice is starting to get a lot of headaches and be a little irritable with people. And we cut to the secretaries for a little more comic relief. They're pretending to drink out of cups. That is one of the hardest things to fake. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't even notice. But in TV shows and movies, you can tell if someone's not drinking liquid out of a cup. Hmm. They were empty cups, but they were talking about their boyfriends again. And they were trash talking a little bit, too, of who yeah. looks younger. I know. And they said they want to try the serum. Next, some delivery men arrive with a, a rollaway bed, Karen. And they ask for Miss Starlin's office. And they say, sweet number one. But they're also setting a, up a room for Dr. Zinthrop. Yes, so apparently Janice is going to sleep in her office in case he needs anything because she wants to know the minute he is able to make more serum for her. So Miss, they call him Mr. Zinthrop now, but he arrives with his nurse. Yeah, Zinthrop has something important to tell Janice, but he just can't seem to remember what it is. He knows he needs to tell her something, though. Next, we find out that Cooper's missing. Yeah, Bill and Mary are talking, and they've noticed that he's gone. Yeah. He wasn't at the meeting that morning. That's right. But Janice tells him, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm sure he's fine. He's decided to take a day off. It'll be fine. He's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, Janice says that. And then Bill is an ass in front of his girlfriend saying how young Janice looks. Yeah, the boss is looking a lot younger. Yeah. <laughs> he's very eager to help her. Next, we see the night watchman. And, and he hears more buzzing. He hears buzzing, so he enters the lab, and next we hear screams. And, and then Zinthrope hears it, too. Yep. Night Watchman's missing, but he never left the building because his stuff is still downstairs, his lunch, lunch pail. Yeah, so the next day or whatever, Janice is talking to Mary about the missing Night Watchman. Janice is not interested. She didn't want to hear anything more about yeah. it. Yeah, but Mary says his... Lunch pail and his raincoat are still in the building. He couldn't have possibly left without those, which are two things you would quite possibly leave behind. Well, I wouldn't. 
Next, we cut to Bill and Mary having dinner again. But they're alone because Arthur's not there yeah, anymore. He, he's missing. And Bill is suspicious. I wrote. Janice goes to see. Well, they go, they go to the lab and break into the desk. Janice goes to see Zinthrop, but he can't remember anything still. And then Bill and Mary find Cooper's pipe in the lab. Well, Janice also tells him that something's happening and she can't control it, but he can't remember. Nope. And she also tells him there's only enough serum for one more injection. Like, get your ass out of bed. <laughs> remember. The next, Janice turns to the wasp woman and nurse is gone. She attacks the nurse. She gone. Yeah. Bill and Mary come to see Zinthrop. And I think they notice a blood stained towel or something. Shawl or jacket or something. I don't know. Something blood stained on the couch. On the couch. Next, we cut to Janice taking her final injection. So, do you think Janice knows she's killing these people? Yes. You do. Okay. I couldn't tell if. Well, she I know was she aware. knows after the fact. Oh, she does. So she's not. That's like, why she's telling him not to worry about Arthur. I guess, but it, and she while could she just doesn't be want like, to hear anything more about the Night Watchmen, <laughs> I didn't know if that's because she knew or because she everything was about the extract. No, uh, I think she knows what she's doing. She may not know what she's doing at the time, but after the fact, I think she knows. She knows. Okay. Bill and Mary find the nurse's purse. Zinthrop wakes up and he says he must warn Janice. All of a sudden, he's regained some knowledge. He, he remembers about the cat and she should not take any more injections. I'm like, well, a little too late for that. And Bill calls up to Janice, his office, right? From Zinthrop's room. Zinthrop's room. And he starts to go up, but for some reason, Mary goes instead. Well, Zinthrop is starting to get agitated and is trying to get up and and bill says i'll stay here because he's worried that he would injure mary somehow so mary runs up to see yeah so mary janice. goes to see janice bill tells her to call the police because they can't get an outside line on that phone karen <laughs> can't get an outside line on the phone well it's like it's like an inter Office yes. phone. I did notice she only dialed three digits too when she was calling internally. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Back in the day, they had those phones. Probably. Well, they were rotary. I know that. So Zinthrop warns Bill about what the enzymes have done to Janice. Mary goes up there and Janice slaps her. <laughs> it's, just, it's basically calm down. And then Janice turns. And she attacks Mary. Well, Zinthrop tells Bill, Mary is in danger. Janice will kill her. She's not a human being. She will destroy her like a wasp queen and devour her remains. But that was nice and gory. Mm -hmm. And Mary says they should call the police. Janice says no. And then she gets a headache. And then bzzz, she turns. <laughs> and they struggle. Mary runs to the balcony screaming. And while Bill's waiting for the elevator, because he can hear her screaming somehow. From 10 floors up. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Because the elevator went to 50. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. But yes, somehow he heard her screaming. And then he so sees... Bill decides to take the stairs. Yes. So he runs up 10 floors of stairs in like a second. <laughs> And he sees Mary's feet being dragged into being the lab. Being dragged, yeah. So they go to the lab and Bill, I guess, struggles with Janice. Well, Bill awkwardly busts the window of the lab door first. <laughs> with his foot, yeah. Yes. He tries to kick the door in, but ends up breaking the window instead, I think, is what it looked like to me. Yeah, it looked awkward, but got the job done. He yeah, gets got in the there. job done. And then uh, Zinthrop arrives. Apparently, he finally... Got on the elevator. And, <laughs> and Janice is attacking them both. Yeah. And Zinthrop yells at Bill to get away from her. 
and he throws carbolic acid. A bottle of carbolic acid, Karen Adder. Yeah, he does. She starts smoking. She smokes. And then Bill pushes her out the window with a chair. <laughs> and she falls, I guess, 50 floors. Shit. I don't know. I think we see carbolic her Carbolic acid. Is it phenol? Hard to tell. It is, Dr. Right. Karen. Yes. Yes, it is. Phenol, also called carbolic acid. We used yes. a lot of phenol. It's not good for you. Shouldn't be breathing that in. Would it make you smoke, Karen? Uh, More than you know, usual. <laughs> Are you saying I'm smoking? <laughs> or I was back no, in the lab. I'm saying Janice was smoking all the uh, time. I'm not sure. I, I I know it would dissolve your skin, but I don't think you would smoke. But I maybe if you were a wasp, it would. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but Zinthrop has a heart attack. I was wondering when well, you kind of grabbed his heart. And then he just kind of slumps. And I think he's gone. Right, you think he's yeah, gone? he's. I think he's gone. But Mary is okay because the last Mary thing we is see safe. is Mary and Bill hugging and bees. The end, Karen. So there's no sequel. Like, where's the sequel here? Unless Zinthrop is not really dead. Well, why or... would there be a sequel? Because they all have sequels. They all have <laughs> dun dun dun. Like, was Mary bitten and she'll be the next wasp queen? Or can't just end like that. It did. Maybe Janice laid eggs somewhere. <laughs> there were a couple remakes. Remakes, but not sequels. Not sequels. And there were there was a parody. Yep. The end, Karen. The end. <laughs> Another one of those films that was released as a double feature with The Beast from Haunted Cave. All right, Karen. Anything you were pleasantly surprised by or really enjoyed in this film that you've chosen? I actually liked this film. It was much better than I thought it was going to be. I liked the story. Okay. I thought the actors were good. I mean, it's interesting. This is from 1959, and you won't relate to this probably, but... Who, me? It's about a woman who is desperate to retain her youth. And that is the same fucking thing that is pushed on us now. The same thing. Like the cosmetics industry wants all of us women to be younger and look young all the time. Like how, what's your nighttime routine, Greg? Before you go to bed, what do you do besides brush your teeth? Put some Grecian formula in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then when I wake up and I shower, I use my just for men <laughs> in my hair. <laughs> but for you to, re okay, that does help retain your youth, but. Uh, I'm teasing too, but just making you, a point that there are other, there are men's products out there too. Some, but, but do you, are you exfoliating? Do you put on three different serums at night? Do you do facials do you put masks on do you well do no because karen you know why you know what the difference is because i shave every day right well that will and that it. takes a layer of skin off it's true <laughs> but you're not sold eye creams and um cellulite creams and hair growers and well yeah like, i'm sold hair growers, well, hair yes, growers I am, Karen. yes that's true <laughs> but there's proportionately women spend a lot more time and money trying to retain youth because that's value in this society and it was in 1959 or... and it still is men get distinguished women get old i mean they are starting now to market to men <laughs> because it's a whole new market they can open up and they say it's dove for men when it's probably the same shit just in a different package yeah but, but I, I mean my dad used grecian formula way way back karen in the 80s i remember <laughs> you know but beyond that there's not a whole lot <laughs> trust me most women have at least two creams they're putting on in the morning and the evening just because they're buying ones. what they're being sold it's very important to society that you maintain your youth for you to have value. 
Okay. I can but see that, I guess. I mean, I guess it's just a touch of gray on a man is like, you know, he's like distinguished. He's, he's, he's old enough to know, you know, yeah, he's experienced, but he's still young enough to, yeah. <laughs> That's why you just use just for men because it doesn't take all the gray. That's right. I only use it once a month, Karen, just to keep that. The annoying thing is, is Greg looks about 20 years <laughs> younger than me and he doesn't use all the serums and shit, but whatever. It's fine. Well, you're much think. older than me, Karen. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> I am way older than you, but I look way older than you. So that's annoying. Anyway, uh, I don't think so do. I just thought it was interesting <laughs> that the same kind of story from 1959 still is true. So the story was good. Um, I thought it was fun. I liked it. Like I said, okay. You know, it, they it sounds like it resonated for you more than it did for me. But I, I can, I get what you're saying. What did you like about it? Anything? <laughs> really, you didn't like it? I mean, there was nothing special about it. No, but there was. I can't nothing. think of any one thing that I liked. You know, it had a scientist. You know. Yeah. Who did his thing and warned her, but she didn't listen. So it wasn't a crazy mad scientist. He was just trying to help the women of the world. So is Janice married? That's what I want to know. She's 40 years old. She's head a of this woman. fucking company. You can't be married and do that. You couldn't do both of those. Back you wouldn't 19... have a trophy husband? <laughs> Not in 1959. Maybe. Maybe you would. I would. <laughs> You would have a trophy husband or you would be a trophy husband? If I was Janice, I would have had a trophy husband. I don't know. We didn't really see in her, any of her personal life to like, no, you know, it was all, well, she, it was all she around was, her being the face of the company, not like her trying to impress real men. But, but that's like the she whole actually thing. Knew. As soon as she She's got trying old, to impress women. That's all. What, that's what women all do. That's the big secret, Craig. Women dress for women, not for men. Really? Okay. But the whole point of it was because she was getting older, she was going to lose her company because her whole company was based on youth and beauty. And once she started to lose that, she started to lose the company. But at some point, you just got to wander off and be the well, swamp she's 40 years meant old. To be. Yeah, she can sell and make a huge profit on her company and just retire to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> The pressure's there. Those that's why all those people have those terrible Botox faces and stuff. They look terrible. But that's what they base their quality on. That's what they, that's them. That's not their their worth. That's not outside influences. That's not, you know, society. That's yes, them. it is. No, it's it's trust me, it's society. Society doesn't want those people to look like that. <laughs> I promise you. No, but well, we're not going to argue too long because you don't get it. But any woman I over it, 45 but... or 50 knows you disappear at a certain point. Nobody sees you anymore. You're done, which in some ways is liberating because you don't give a fuck anymore. You just don't. You know, it's you've lived your life. You know what's what. You know, there's a certain empowerment to that, but there's also a bit of a sting at a certain point pun intended that you know you've lost it you're done it's okay i think it depends it depends on your chosen profession as well well i'm talking about society i'm talking yeah, about walking know. around in the world and oh I in almost any profession what what profession are you going to throw at me that it benefits you to to look Teacher. older <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't know. All right. So I don't think my mom gave a shit because <laughs> she got older. She didn't. That's what I'm saying. At a certain point, you don't. That's what's liberating. But it's a shame. Yeah. It's still like that. All right. Anything you were disappointed in, Karen? <laughs> well, the costume was pretty bad. It was terrible. Yeah. Sets were bad, too. Well, yeah, the elevator was particularly yeah, was bad. Terrible. It was that a room. Had, <laughs> that had to do with acting too. They went too far in and stuff. It didn't look like an elevator. Did but not. the the costume when she turned into the wasp woman. Yeah, I don't think there was any like 
gap in the floor either on the elevator. No. <laughs> it was no. just you could but, see she was wearing gloves and the mask. Yeah. And it's another one that I kind of got sucked in by the movie poster. And the movie poster shows a wasp a body with a female head. Yeah, and I thought, oh, that would opposite. be yes. And it's it's completely different. I thought, oh, that would be cool to see. I would like to see that. How would they do that? You know, so that was disappointing too. the poster. I actually like the movie, though. I'm sorry you didn't, but. Didn't hate it. Didn't like it. You know what I mean? Wasn't the best thing I've ever seen. Wasn't the worst. <laughs> For what it was, I thought it was pretty good. Which brings us to what cocktail rating, Karen, are you going to give this film? Or are we going to give this film? That's hard because I guess it's probably a four considering yeah, a four. what we've given threes to, but it's a fun movie to watch. I thought it was easy to watch. I was entertained. It's a good four. We've given some bad movies fours, but this was a good four. I will say that the colorization was very good. Was or wasn't? Was not. They only co- tried to colorize the face and lots of times like everything around it was black and white. And yeah, I noticed that, you know, and... I thought it was the makeup, but I guess you're right. It was the colorization. Uh-huh. It was because their necks would be a completely different color than their face. And I thought it was makeup, especially on Janice, because I thought they Janice, were... I did watch the like the color uh, or the original black and white like trailer and previews and shit. She looks a lot older in black and white from the very beginning. You know what I mean? I think because it had to do with makeup and you couldn't see it. I think they blurred it in the color. Like when they put color on, it probably blurred. Because in black and white, if you use makeup, you can put lines and stuff in. Because the color version, I didn't think she changed that much. You know, her did, eyes, her eyebrows got thinner. That was about all I noticed. Yeah, she didn't look... <laughs> Yeah, she didn't look old to begin with. But in the black and white, she did look older. <laughs> she looked old and she was 40. She looked older than she did in the color. That's what I'm saying. All right, four cocktails. But I still recommend it. It's short. It's fine. Fine. It is. All right, comments on the cocktail? Not my favorite. But I'm not a mint in my cocktail kind of girl. But it got a little better as it watered down, I think. Not bad. I might order one at a bar. See if they know what it is. Mm -hmm. Be classy. I'll have a stinger. (laughs) I don't think it's bad. A stinger for the gentleman, please. Yeah, it's um, Yeah, I mean, it's fine with me. I would use less mint and more brandy. The mint comes through way too much for me. Oh, do order it in a bar. See if they know what it is. Or if they have to go look it up on their phone. My bartender is pretty knowledgeable, so she'll probably know. But I don't know. She may not. In Florida, they might know if you're on vacation because, you know, older people go there. It didn't fall out of favor till the 70s. So they might know. They might. All right. Anything we learned today? We learned about the stinger. The stinger. The drink. Because we're classy and shit. Yeah. We learned about bees. Bees and royal jelly. Yep. Phenol. Bolic acid. (laughs) Phenol. (laughs) Anything else? I wish we would have seen more lab shit so that I could keep asking Dr. Karen about the experiments and whatnot, but... (laughs) We learned that he could. There turn wasn't it. even like any beakers smoking or bubbling or anything in that lab. No, what kind but of there was lab some. Was that? There was some equipment, but none of it was being used. It was all empty. He hey, could turn a guinea pig into a rat. That was he impressive. Could do that. Yeah. That would have made me not want to take the injection right there. <laughs> well, apparently, you know the difference between a rat and a guinea pig, and Janice did not, Karen. The kitten was cute. It had the same markings. Yes, it did. That's nice, considering the other one. We didn't see the cat or nothing. We didn't see the, well, the cat came back later. 
but we didn't see the big cat before it turned into a kitten. So no, we, we just have to take Janice's word. But that the it has cat, the same but the, markings. The cat that attacked him was a cat, not no longer a kitten. It did get older. All right. Anything else we learned? Poor no. Falcon. Oh Ranchero. yeah. That I did a good guess today. You did do a good guess. I'll give you a bell on that one. Yay. <laughs> All right, next film, Karen. It's your choice. What do you got? Oh, is it? Is it my choice? Well, Karen, the film I have chosen for next week, oddly enough, is also from 1959. Didn't play in it, just happened. What film, is it? The film I have chosen is called The Bat from 1959, starring Vincent Price. Okay. Why did you choose that one? Well, because our next episode airs August 10th, and The Bat was released on August 9th, 1959. Ooh. Okay. It stars Vincent Price and Agnes Moorhead. Remember Ooh. Agnes Moorhead, Karen? From Bewitched. Bewitched. Yes. And Dora, right? Is that who she played? I think so. The mother. Yes. She had the best clothes. <laughs> That's right. And it is. Included with Amazon Prime, Karen. So it's two weeks in a row we don't have to buy, pay for our movies. Do you have a cocktail to go with this movie? I, I do, Craig, Karen. What is it? Cocktail I've chosen is called the Blind Bat Cocktail. What are we, we going to need? We already did the Bat Bite. So I could, but there are, I thought about doing a different version of Bat Bite, but I didn't. Uh, nah, I'll do something different, right? Because there okay. are more than one Bat Bites. So the blind back cocktail, Karen, we're going to need vodka, Coca-Cola, or Coke. <laughs> I might use Pepsi. Okay. And Bacardi white rum. Ooh, okay. I think I am going to use Pepsi. Just so you know, just because. <laughs> you rebel. Yeah, can't use Sprite. I got to use Pepsi. <laughs> Sprite's a Coke product. Isn't it? Probably. I, yeah, I think it is. Sprite is a Coke product. I think 7-Up is Pepsi. Why did you turn into a Southern woman all of a sudden? I don't know. I just have a fondness for Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the porch down in the, down oh, in the hills of Grandpa Kentucky. would give you a Pepsi. Gave me a Pepsi. <laughs> used to put them in the freezer, get them cold and take them out. Hopefully. Otherwise, they would explode, Karen. <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen in my freezer before. And we'd have Pepsi colored ice, like a slushy. <laughs> hey, that sounds good. Yep. Anyone you need to thank this week, Karen? I'd like to thank our listener. There's a lot of podcasts out there. Thanks for spending time with us. Yes, we do appreciate it. What about you, Greg? Who do you need to thank? Of course, Karen. I need to thank the band Verse 13. How could we do this podcast without the music from the band Verse 13, Karen? Well, as we learned last week, music really can make a difference. And the music does make the podcast oh, yeah. better. Yes, yes. Yes, we did last week. All right, Karen. Anything else? Please drink responsibly. Yes. Hey, it's Karen. And I'm here to talk to you about getting social with us. Did you know you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast? Or check out our website, scaryspirits.com. If you have something to say, email us at info at scaryspirits.com. And as always, thanks so much for listening. Please drink responsibly. <laughs> <laughs>